My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hey everyone, Ken Whiting back with another episode of Paddle Tales. Now in this episode, we're gonna explore one of the least well-known national parks in Quebec, and we're gonna check out a really cool urban paddling scene. But before we get started, if you haven't already, subscribe to Paddle TV so that you get notified the next time an episode goes live. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're heading to a part of Quebec that's considered by many to be a distillation of the best the province has to offer. It's a beautiful and wide open landscape that offers incredible access to the natural world through its two national parks, 15 regional parks, and three wildlife reserves. But the postcard beauty is anything but static, as the area prides itself on having a vibrant community that shares an intimate connection with the outdoors. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring the beautiful waters and incredible diversity of Quebec Authentique. Located on the north shore of the St. Lawrence River, between Quebec's two urban hubs of Quebec City and Montreal, Authentic Quebec is a blending of the province's beautiful Lanaudière and Mauricy regions. To kickstart my adventures, I found myself in the province's largest, oldest, and probably most well-known national park, Mont Tremblant National Park. Although I've spent a fair amount of time in the park over the years, this particular area is new to me. The Mont Tremblant Park that I know is very close to Mont Tremblant Resort, and it's beautiful but pretty busy because it's close to Montreal. Where we are here in the park is only an hour further from Montreal, but it has such a remote feel. Not many people here, very thick wilderness. It's, this is very cool. To show me around, I'm meeting up with Ben Peterson from Au Cano Volant. Hi Ken. Nice to meet you. You too. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> L'Assomption. Here it is. Very cool. This looks like it's going to be a good day. Yep. So this is the lake itself. This is the, the main lake, uh, but one square kilometer. Heading down. We're heading that way that towards way. The, the beginning of the river. It's about five kilometers down, so it's a long, narrow lake caused by the dam. Cool. Well, shall Beautiful we do day. It? Let's That's do it. A good day. Yes. <laughs> Although I've never been to this part of Quebec before, I've heard plenty about the L'Assomption River. It's a well-known paddling route, and at over 120 miles in length, it's one of the most important rivers in the Lanaudière region. Although canoes tend to be the preferred choice on the river, there are three of us on the water today, and I really don't feel like fighting the wind in a solo canoe. And so I'm taking a kayak while Ben is taking a canoe with the help of park naturalist Eric Loiseau. Cool! So Ben, tell me about Au Cano Volant. Um, the company itself has been around for, we celebrated 15 years last year, so oh this is our God. 16th summer. And so we do mainly canoeing, a little bit of kayaking. Yeah. It's, it's a great school river. Okay. Perfect. For no matter what level you are on canoeing or even certain sections for, uh, for river kayaking, um, there, there's, there's going to be a section for you to, you know, raise your game. Yeah. So we, we take people that have never seen a canoe 
never been in a canoe and take them into class two rapids guided yeah uh, but we can give classes on different parts of the river you know so people can get up to like their level threes and stuff like that with uh, the quebec federation whatever level you're at we can take you to parts to, to raise you up a notch. So you've got waterfalls and you've got rapids and you've got nice beautiful rock and stuff like that. Well the neat thing about, I mean for me seeing it is just how much variety it offers. Even you see a lot of it when you're driving yeah. uh, alongside the river. Oh there's a hundred, I think there's there's over a hundred lakes in the watershed of La Sancion. Um, like important lakes, they're not, not puddles. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got, here we're in the shield, the Canadian shield, so you've got waterfalls and you've got rapids and you've got nice beautiful rock and stuff like that. Well, the park is open all year round. So during the winter you can still come here to uh, do snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. And uh, we, uh, we are not uh, so far from uh, Montreal, so we've got a lot of uh, families that uh, are coming here. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's really nice. The La Sompsion River really is a classic wilderness river. From the moment you leave the launch, you feel as though you've left civilization behind. And the only connections that matter are the connections you make with nature and those you're traveling with. But as amazing as it is to dive into the wilderness and escape the real world for a while, paddling is more than that and can play a special role in our day-to-day -day lives and in urban environments. A perfect example of this is Maikan Aventure, an adventure travel company found in the city of Trois-Rivières. Where exactly are we? We are at uh, Maikan Club in Trois-Rivières. And this is a Caillou Canac kayak club and also a center for ski, skiing and hiking. And this is the St. Maurice River? St. Maurice River. It's, uh, we're at the bottom, exactly at the bottom of the St. Maurice River. Has this always been home, this area? Yeah. Yeah, you've always lived here. So this river has played a big role in your life. Yeah, a big, big, big. Yeah, I, start, I started racing in 1965. Really? And I... Canoe or kayak? Uh, canoeing, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Tandem canoeing. That's what we have uh, popular down here. And now they have uh, also in the race, big canoes, there were nine persons in it. Oh, really? Really spectacular. It's such a big, canoe, kayak, paddling community. Yes, it is. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's, you know, it's it's really cool to see all the people out paddling, just enjoying the water. It's wonderful. Meet friends and you'll see when we go to dinner, a lot of people on the shore there. So this is Borealis. 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 That was the, uh, Canadian International Paper Corporation. Yeah. And this was the, the draining system here. They took it and made a, a beautiful restaurant inside. Really? And all the explanations and uh, respect for all the loggers, the thousands of loggers that worked on the river over the years. St. Lawrence is just down there. Just down there. In the St. Lawrence River, the water is green. Right. And uh, it makes a separation with the water that come from the St. Maurice that are black. Although I love wilderness paddling trips, there's something really cool about urban paddling, especially in a place like Trois-Rivières that has such an active paddling scene. It's fun to see other people enjoy the river so much and to be able to pull over at a riverside restaurant. You also just get a unique perspective of things from the water that you simply can't get from the land. After a quick lunch stop, Alex and I head further upstream to a section of the St. Maurice River that has some fast flowing water and which leads to a very special place. Well, I'm guessing this is the spot. Yeah, this is a spot. It's the Devil's Fountain legend and we are going to go and see that and uh, look what it looks like. Let's okay? do it. 
and sometimes <laughs> it, it, it burns a lot more. Maybe it's because we're late in summer. Look at that. Yeah, so you see? That's very cool. Whoa! <laughs> that one was still on fire. Yeah, it was still on fire. I think it got your, I think it got your hand a little because <laughs> I smelled burnt hair. <laughs> That's okay, I have so much, <laughs> yeah. I can spare some. <laughs> right on, that's cool. You don't usually get to light water on fire. That's a nice... Yeah, just to see water burning. burn. Burn. Yeah. something. So this is it. Well, shall we? Shall we? we let's, shall. let's move on. Leaving the Devil's Fountain, we have a few miles of cruisy Class 1 whitewater to take us back to Maikan Aventure. It's been a really enjoyable day paddling with Alex through the heart of Trois Rivières. But even though the sun is quickly dropping towards the horizon, I have one more place to check out. Word has it that Lac Saint-Pierre is one of the best spots in Quebec to watch the sunset. And I'm a sucker for a good sunset. Sunsets are like waterfalls and lighthouses. It doesn't matter how many you see, it's always cool. I really can't think of a better way to finish this trip to L'Onodiard Maurice than a sunset paddle in Lac Saint Pierre. What a night, what a day. Paddling away the last hour of light is a great opportunity to reflect on the past few days in La Nadière and Mauricie. The trip has been amazing and a real reminder of how many different types of experiences you can have with a paddle in your hand. And there's no such thing as the best experience. All that matters is having an experience. And that just means getting out there whenever you can, in whatever craft you can, wherever you can. Well, that does it for this episode of Paddle Tales. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below. And lastly, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, so you get notified the next time an episode goes live. Next time on Paddle Tales, Luke Hopkins is grabbing his stand-up paddleboard and heading to one of the most vibrant and exciting cities in North America, the city of Montreal. A striking union of European charm and North American attitude, Montreal is a historic and multicultural place that pulses with energy. Set on the banks of the St. Lawrence River, Montreal also boasts some of the best freshwater surfing that you'll find anywhere. Join us as we explore all sides of Montreal next time on Paddle Tales. <laughs>